Okay, so uh, Dan, uh, where, where we come from, Silicon Valley, I mean, you don't get any more geeky <laughs> than Cisco. Uh, <laughs> uh, router, uh, what's that? Uh, so you're here in this uh, film festival, uh, courting all of these people wearing you know, black clothes, trying to be cool. So <laughs> what, what, what are you doing here? Buying clothes, apparently. You know, to put it bluntly, it's made it's made my my entire career, career possible. possible. Awesome. And then and then you know, uh, to take it a step further, the uh, the film that I um, that I uh, I had released last summer, uh, Monster House, clearly was was computer <laughs> completely computer generated. Absolutely. And so and so technology again was was uh, was right at the crux of what I was doing. Basically, people see the film, they get excited. Now what? What do they do? And so we feel that. We're excited and we feel responsibility to help provide that. We, yeah, we were talking about this the other day. We were talking about how, just in general, what you were talking about, they're not about losing people, because I don't really think you lose people. But what we were talking about was that now that there's no routine for viewing anymore, for example, it was, there was a time where everybody saw the same show on Friday night and talked about it on Saturday, or everybody heard the same, bought the same album, about it the next day, or what the same CD, or and at the, that those conversations have now gone into these multiple, multiple areas where groups of people are talking together hours on end, days on end about a subject that another group will absolutely have no clue even exists. So these sort of greater shared experiences are, I think, really very important. So, and the internet is going to be absolutely key. We've already created a website with the film, and all the X, the 54 people you see in the film, and actually people that didn't make the final cut, are all there with bios and then links to their websites and work, so that people see it. Wow, that was really interesting. You talked about mushrooms. So what, what, what's that really about? So you can go and uh, click on Paul Stamets and find out about his body of work and get connected to his organization if that's what dreams you want, or if it's global warming, or if it's uh, you know reseeding uh, pasture land, or whatever it is. We're, we've already provided an access to that, and that's through um, the internet. I think that the uh, internet, when it first came on, we thought was a medium of communication, until we realized that internet actually redefined communication completely. So it's no longer a medium, it's actually a language. Interesting is we've we spent a lot of time with some of the the pros spend time with some of the large existing content creators. And over the last several years, I've seen a lot of change. Uh, I think three to five years ago, it was something that was resistant. They were resistant to. It. They didn't understand that digital was not just another silo, right? So they had movies, TV, digital, right? And everyone, went, what's digital? Well, I think it's made my career possible, to put it bluntly. You know, I, I was a, uh, a, a broke, struggling student in film school, okay. and uh, and I wanted to make a film that would mean something, that would tell a big story, and that uh, would allow me to, uh, to, to make myself known, to make myself heard. I think it's pretty significant. I mean, the fact that people are making films at home on Final Cut Pro or using Apple Express, and they're already, you know, really making their own films. And I used, you know, the 
the, the tools at my disposal, which was my personal computer okay. and my kitchen. Okay. And, uh, and a couple of actors that I got for free. And so, you know, I made a thesis film that basically kickstarted my entire career okay. for $400 on a, on, a, on a personal computer in my kitchen with the shutters closed. So, for example, I was able to, on this uh, project, we worked in New York in the edit on the Abbott system, but I wanted to be a bit mobile, or I needed to go home to Ireland, I needed to show the band stuff, they needed to see cuts, they needed to see, so it meant I had to have everything in, you know, low res 2D, blah, blah, blah. But I also wanted to be able to make changes while I was at home. So I was able to, you know, have Avid Express Pro on my laptop and little hard drive, and off I went, and I'm, you know, at my mum's house, and I'm putting locators in on the cut, and I'm emailing those files back to my editor in New York, and he's, you know, we're, we're in LA, uh, now we're in LA for the 3D part of the process, so my special effects person is in New York, so we're sending him, a, you know, a, a quick time of some ideas for some effects we want. Um, he's uploading the effects at his end, we're looking at them at our end, we're making a few changes, you know, we're emailing back our change requests. He's then putting them on the server for the special effects people to, t to, to download, to turn into 3D special effects. And, uh, and so now they're getting very serious about trying to figure out what to do. And I think you're gonna see a time of incredible experimentation. And what I felt has been that there has been more openness, more, all industries, but Hollywood works on fear and greed. And the fear is now generating a lot of uh, creative stuff. I provide visual content for YouTube's live shows. And one of the things I'm very aware of is that as technology develops, technicians, there's very little connection between creativity and the technology that's being developed. So it ends up with a heavily weighted towards content made by people who are technically savvy and technically minded. You know, when you get surrounded by so much technology, I think I think the thing you have to remember as a, as a storyteller is that the technology can only go so far. And 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 it is kind of like, you know, to to create an astoundingly uh, uh, convenient metaphor, it's like it's like a big body of water. Mm -hmm. You know, such as the one right behind me. Exactly. I, I you know you can't plan this stuff. And uh, and 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 you can either you can either use it to help you get somewhere or you can allow it to kind of you know to to uh, to swallow you up and uh, and kill you. <laughs> One of the things we really try and talk about a lot is bringing a sense of emotion to technology. And I think that somewhere that's a little bit of the gap that we want to talk about. For a long time, in two parts of California <coughs> never spoke. Northern California and Southern California never spoke and they mistrusted each other. <laughs> and we're going to have to speak. And we're going to have to work together. And we're going to, for, for LA, the problem is there's no brand. You know, when was the last time you said, my gosh, Paramount's coming out with a movie, it must be good, right? And these guys have lost their ability to connect to the audience, they're gonna to have to reconnect. And we we want to help them for a variety of reasons. Some of them selfish because we want to see bits flying around the network, and some not so selfish because we think, you know, that, that this is this industry is so vital and important to what's going on that having the ability to have people understand the audience and create better content is gonna be a great hopefully it'll be something which will be important.